Hey everyone, it's Pete with Zengig. I'm with Ricky Baez, 20 year HR veteran to talk about what it takes to become an HR director. Ricky, how are you today? I'm doing good, Pete. How about you? I'm doing awesome. All right, man. So if I want to be an HR director, where should I start? You know, so Pete, this is one of those things that um, um, back in the day, right? HR had a bad rap and I'm almost willing to bet it has a bad rap right now. Um, so it, it's um, back in the day, it, you know, to be into, into human resources, which, which was called personnel, that wasn't a job people wanted to go into. Now that it has evolved, the business world has evolved, now more and more people want to get into this job. So what I tell people to do, the first and foremost, read read, read as much as you can up on that position. But more importantly, find somebody on LinkedIn and just build a relationship with them, Pete. That way you're able to maybe ask them to see if you can shadow them for like a few hours. Because one of the best ways to find out if you're going to enjoy a career somewhere is if you actually get to see the ins and outs of it. So the first thing you should do is to build a relationship with somebody to see if you can shadow them for a day. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. I think mm -hmm. it's really good advice. If I'm a young professional, though, I'm 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 you know, looking at ahead at my career, trying to figure out where to start. What advice would you give to someone who's just starting out? So try to get look honestly, honestly, and I know we say this all the time, Pete. Go to these networking events. Go and go to these networking events. Learn as much as you can about the HR role. Learn as much as the laws, because once you get into HR, you have to know a lot about employment and labor law federally and at the state level, especially in the state where you're going to to work in. You'll quickly find out California and New York are are really big bears when it comes to the HR world. So one of the things that that I would advise is start shaking hands, kissing babies at these networking events and start to learn more about the employment and labor law. Once you do that, try to get a job somewhere entry level, because at the entry level, you are going to get to do all that grunt level work, which I call, which would put you into the front lines on all the ins and outs of HR, anywhere from employer relations, payroll, benefits administrations, um, compensation, training and development, recruitment, and get your hands dirty there. And then that way you can learn as much as you can and then start building a career path upward. So a lot of staff level positions in HR uh, that you just named, but what about degrees or qualifications needed to even get one of those jobs? You can't just show up one day and say, I'm ready to be an HR generalist or a payroll uh, manager, right? You have to start uh, start somewhere. So what what about education? From an, from an education perspective, since HR, most of human resources is dealing with businesses, right? I would venture to guess all of them are dealing with some kind of for-profit business. So any degrees in business management, business administration is going to help you out. There are some, some minor degrees that you can get in human resource management and even some bachelor's in HR management. And if you really want to get serious with it, go ahead, go, go ahead and get your master's in HR or your MBA. That is definitely going to help you out as well as finance. It's really going to help you out because the higher up you go in that career pathing ladder, the more fluent you have to be in the language of numbers. So it's really going to be helpful if you get a degree in finance as well. So what, what about uh, someone who doesn't want to go to college or doesn't have the ability to? Should they should they readjust their expectations a little bit on becoming an HR director or is it still realistic? No, it's still realistic. Um, you know, it's back then uh, a degree was necessary. Was necessary. Now that's that's starting to loosen up a little bit because a lot of organizations are starting to value experience, real world experience, over the theory based learning process that a college offers. I'm not devaluing a college degree because it gives you the foundation for you to be successful in your role. But what a lot of organizations are looking at right now is experiences and more important than that, certifications. They're looking for the SBHR, SHRM certifications that are that that really show what you're able to do. So if you're able to get those, that is just one step closer for you to get for you to get that dream job. So last question, Ricky. If you were giving advice to someone who is thinking about a career in HR, but not sure whether they're a good fit, what, what would you say are the traits that make someone um, you know, good in this role? Oh my goodness. Patience. Pete, let me tell you, you need some patience and you need a poker face. 
<laughs> you need a poker face. But here's why you need patience, right? Because you're going to be, it's let's, let's not talk about a director yet. Let's talk about a generalist who is investigating something that happened at the office. You're going to hear a story for the first time from this person that you have heard millions of times. And you know where this story is going to go, but you need the patience to let the person finish. You need the poker face to not show that you're shocked by something they tell you, because the more nonverbal cues you give somebody, uh, the more ammo you give them to kind of move the story along to get a better reaction from you. So you need to have a really good poker face and patience to make sure that you're able to have these conversations. Now, I got one more. I got one more. Um, you've got to be able to have amazing people skills. You have to, because you've got to be able to bring the skill set from the HR world and show your your business partner, the business leader, how these HR competencies are going to help the organization move that needle from A to B. So you do need relationship building skills as well. Perfect. Ricky, thanks so much. Great advice today. Appreciate your time. All right, everyone, you've heard it from the expert. Now you know what it takes to become an HR director. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye.